Now I want to turn to another announcement or uh, findings handed down by the Joint Standing Committee uh, looking at electoral reform. This is, could be uh, sweeping changes to the way we vote on the Senate and that big ballot paper we're all so familiar with every three years. Uh, joining me on the program today is Liberal MP Teresa Gambara and Labor MP Tim Watts. Now, Tim Watts, I want to go first to you about these recommendations made by the Joint Standing Committee. All three parties the Greens, the ALP and the Coalition have agreed that this is what should be implemented. Now this will uh, really uh, limit the ability for micro parties to get up. Do you think it's fair that three well established parties should be able to make these decisions? Well look I mean I think it's important that all Australians are able to have confidence in their electoral system and what we've seen in recent elections are some results that I think most people agree are very surprising. Um, people didn't go into the electorate, uh, into the electoral box, expecting some of the outcomes we've seen. So I think these changes are important for ensuring that people know what they're getting when they you know, participate in a federal election. And Theresa Gambaro, if these rules were applied Hi, at, the, at the last election, this would have limited Clive Palmer's success, wouldn't it? Well, look, I, we, I am in agreement with Tim. How about that? Um, look, most of, uh, most of the Australian people deserve uh, to know who they're voting for. And I think the report today shows that we need greater transparency so that when people go into that ballot box, they know exactly who they're voting for. So, look, it's a welcome measure. Um, Theresa Gambara, also this week, your criticism of the debt levy earned a bit of a rebuke from at least some of your colleagues. Do you think your opinion on that might change once you do see the whole package of the budget? Look, Laura, we don't know what's in the pa package. Uh, a lot of things have been speculated about. Um, I will wait and see like everyone else until budget night. But look, I, um, I, I made my comments known. I spoke to the Treasurer and um, I spoke to the Prime Minister's office. And I believe we need to provide certainty for people. The Australian people want to know um, what we're proposing. They understand that we've been left um, a terrible Labor budget mess of debt and deficit and they want to work with us and what that was the, the point I was levy? making. What about the fuel levy? Is that another broken promise or a much needed reform? Laura, I don't know um, if there is going to be a fuel levy. Uh, I guess we're going to have to wait and see until budget night. So it's purely speculative at this point. But if, if it seems that a fuel levy is going to be introduced, it will raise uh, billions of dollars over the forward estimates. But how you're going to have to sell this message to your electorate. Are you concerned about, once again, the broken promise? Look, I find out about what's in the budget at um, 7 o'clock on budget night. I think you guys find out about it a bit <laughs> earlier, um, the media. So you're ahead of us on that score. Look, until, um, until budget night, it's just speculation. And there's been a lot of speculation about what's in and what isn't in the budget. And um, let's see what happens on budget night. I know that Australians expect a high standard of living. Uh, Joe Hockey's got an incredibly difficult job to do, and I respect the job that he has to do. We've inherited a, a, a mess. The one, the one good thing um, that Labor's good at is wrecking the Treasury. And, uh, and, and they do that really well when they come in. And they have this collective amnesia um, about debt and, and deficit. And Tim, I know that you're only a new member and uh, can't blame you for that. But look, we have, uh, and I know red is the Labor Party's favourite colour, but here we have the third largest debt um, of IMF countries and the fastest growing expenditure um, of the o o IMF countries. Now, that's a bronze medal, that's, that's a gold medal. This is a dice that we don't want to be on. Australia can do better. Tim Watts, I'll let you respond to that, but also on the fuel levy. This may be a broken promise, but it's been frozen. The indexation has been frozen for 13 years. Isn't it time any government looked at it? Well, I should say that while I'm a new member, uh, Theresa obviously isn't. And she was a member of the Howard government that did freeze this indexation on, uh, on the fuel excise. Um, I believe that she welcomed that at the time and um, if she's changed her position since then, um, I'd be interested in the reasoning. But, you know, Theresa said that we'd find out on budget night what's in this budget. Well, why do we have the last election? I mean, I think most Australians would have uh, wanted to know what would be in the next budget 
when they went to the polls at the previous but election. But Tim, what's, aren't we getting, into this, was aren't we getting into this ridiculous situation where in an election campaign parties are now holding each other to a standard which is really difficult to meet uh, because you now need to name what you're going to do in an election campaign before you actually see what's in front of you, all the details once you get into government. Isn't that a very difficult standard for either side to live up to? Oh, look, I mean, I think this is just another excuse from Joe Hockey, you know. I, I don't think the Australian public are expecting too much to think that when they hear uh, an opposition promising there will be no new taxes and lower taxes, that they won't be getting a GP tax, an increase in the fuel excise, mm. uh, an increase to income tax. I mean, no Australian went to the, the ballot box at the last election expecting all of this in the federal budget. And it's not Gambaro, too much to ask Tony Abbott to keep his word. Uh, Theresa Gambaro, I just want to touch on something that you just uh, made a comment about uh, before, and that is the budget process. It seems to me, from an outsider looking in, that uh, backbenchers aren't given a lot of detail. You don't see the budget, as you said, till uh, just after we do. Is that an acceptable situation? Look, it's been long-standing tradition for whatever reason, but I think the whole um, the whole budget process, um, what we've seen, uh, previous governments um, of all persuasions play this sort of cat and mouse game of what's in and what isn't in. What we we need to do better than that. Um, business wants certainty, the community wants certainty, and I think what happens is people get frightened out there. Uh, I think if we're going to have some uh, new have measures some brought in... Have some of the pre-budget leaks really frightened some of your constituents? Well, absolutely. I mean, people deserve certainty. I'd like to see um, us going forward. They've been traumatised by... Uh, six years of the previous Labor uh, government, the Gillard um, Rudd government, and people are still traumatised by the waste, the mismanagement, you know, policies that are on the back of envelopes. I mean, people want to move forward. We said that we would take people forward. They want to be part of the solution. And uh, the feedback I've been getting from people, they understand the, the, the mess that we've inherited. I mean, we've got $123 billion of cumulative uh, deficits. Uh, the audit... Uh, Commission identified that if, unless remedial action is taken, $409 billion will grow to almost $700 billion. So what people are saying to me and, uh, is that they want to be part of the solution and they okay. understand we're, that we're going to have to share the pain and we're going to have to take some very tough budget measures. OK, Tim Watts, I want to look at the, another announcement today. It was on the front page of the Australian newspaper. Very deep cuts to the public service. Does this show us that under Labor this was too bloated? No, I don't think so at all. I mean, you, you, the, the issue on jobs is that we need a plan for... Tony Abbott promised at the last election there'd be one million new jobs um, in Australia. Now, all we've seen from him since the election is job cuts. We've seen 2,500 jobs lost in my electorate at the Toyota plant in Altona. There's another 1,400 at risk at the Williamstown shipyards. The only time you hear Tony Abbott talking about jobs is when he's talking about public servant jobs that are going to be cut. Theresa Gambaro, just one last question to you. I think it's fair to say that we're hearing a very different tone from you today than what we, the comments we did see in the newspaper and on the radio the other morning. Have you been told by anyone from above that you need to stop speaking out about the government? Oh, look, uh, Laura, I've never stopped speaking, uh, speaking out. I mean, anyone who knows me knows that as a backbencher, when I was part of the executive, I always, um, uh, I always spoke uh, my mind. So nobody, uh, anyone who knows me well knows <laughs> that um, I will always continue to do that. Look, I've had a few conversations with the, uh, with the Treasurer. I've given him my feedback. He's uh, rung me on a couple of occasions. Look, I, uh, I think the process uh, and the way that we've been communicating could be a lot better. But um, no, absolutely not. Look, I, I uh, said what I said earlier. Um, we can do this a lot better. We need to communicate. We need to take people with us. I've been saying this all along. People want us. People want us to tell them about the pain. Um, there's, you know, they understand that we were left a, a, a mess by Labor, and we've got a mountain of debt and deficit, and they want to work with okay. us for a solution because it's unsustainable. All right, Theresa Gambaro, we look to, forward to your response once the budget is finally handed down and you do see that detail. Uh, Tim Watts, equally, thank you so much, both of you, Thanks, for joining Laura. me on Lunchtime Agenda today.